This lesson is titled, How to Divide Fractions. So, Brian. Yes? We know that whenever we multiply, we're getting bigger and whenever... Larger. Larger. And whenever we're getting lesser, it's because we're dividing or subtracting, right? It gets smaller, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that always the case? I think so. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you show me? Okay. So, Brian, what's your favorite fruit? Well, I enjoy a ripe cantaloupe every once in a while. Mmm, the melons, huh? Okay, so we'll make a problem about cantaloupe. So see, we've got a cantaloupe, and we've sliced it in half, and we're looking down on it. And it's divided into eighths. Make sure that you're drawing this in your how-to book. Are we having a party for eight people? Yeah, eight lucky people. Mmm, cantaloupe. And we're going to invite eight students to our cantaloupe party, okay? Okay. Okay. So these eight students have been invited to our cantaloupe party. Ooh. So if we have eight eighths, which we can see here, we know that each one of these students gets one eighth. So we just did the division problem. One whole divided by eight. And the answer is? One, one eighth. eighth. So that's dividing with whole numbers and getting a fraction. But what if we decide to focus in on these eight eighths and invite some more people? To More. our cantaloupe party. Yeah, you can never have enough. Uh, it's less cantaloupe. It is less cantaloupe for us, but but it's okay. Let's let's check it out. Okay. If we double the number of people that are coming to our Hello. number of students, then instead of eight, we have sixteen. Sixteen lucky students. That's half of our class. Hey. So now we have the division problem. 1 divided by 16. Or that one whole that we're looking at could be written 8 eighths divided by 16. So we have these 8 eighths now being shared equally among 16 students. So 8 eighths divided by 16. Basically, we're going to have to cut each of those eighths in half no. And you're right, the pieces got smaller. But everyone gets cantaloupe. Everyone does, even though they only get one sixteenth Yay. of that cantaloupe. Okay, so that's some basics. You ready to dive in and do some more challenging things? Let's do it. All right. Let's go back to our original eight eighths of the cantaloupe. And, you know the elves in our classroom that like to steal things. They, they've stolen four-eighths of the cantaloupe. <laughs> they've been taken away, and we are now left with only four-eighths. Oh, no! And see, we really have a problem now because I want to invite more students. We need to figure out how the elves got in. We need as many people as we can get. So we need 24 of our best brains to come to our cantaloupe party and figure out where the elves came in, why they stole half the cantaloupe, and we might as well snack on the remaining cantaloupe, right? Right then. Okay. So four-eighths, we have half of the cantaloupe left, and we want to share them equally among the 24 students. So if we were going to draw that as a picture, ee, we have these four eighths, and we need to cut them up into like 24 equal parts? Yes. Whoa. Well, circles aren't going to be very friendly for that. So let's change our model to some squares instead. All right. Okay, so let's change our cantaloupe model to a rectangular one. 
<laughs> That's a funny cantaloupe. Yes, it is. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's eighths. And we are going to color in the four eighths that the elves have not stolen. So make sure that you are putting that in your notes in your how-to book. So we've got four eighths and we want to divide it equally among 24 students. And we can kind of think about that if we want numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator as four over eight divided by 24 over one because 24 as a whole number would be 24 in the numerator and one in the denominator. So now I need to start thinking about how to get this half of the cantaloupe, the four eighths, equally split up. So I basically I have four pieces. Four times what gets me 24? Ooh, four times six is 24. So if I cut each of these six ways, I'll have four by six equals 24. So I did my halfway point, now I've got thirds. I can divide the bottom half into thirds. And if I double check to count them all up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, I'll get 24 because I have four by six. So now how much of the whole cantaloupe is one of those pieces. Got to compare it to the whole cantaloupe. So if the whole cantaloupe was cut into these strips, now we're talking about 48 of those little bitty pieces. And each one of our brave students that's hunting down the elves gets a sample size of one out of the 48 original pieces of cantaloupe that make the one whole cantaloupe. So we can write in our answer. Now, like always with fractions, it's not gonna make sense for us to always draw it out. There must be some sort of a shortcut that can get us that right answer. So let's take a look at that division problem. Let's look at a shortcut and we'll know why it works. So let's write this again. 4 eighths divided by 24 over 1. 24 whole students. Because we're not chopping students in half, we're chopping cantaloupe in half. Well, we also know that 4 eighths is the same as 1 half. And then divided by 24 over 1. So we have another way of looking at that. How did we get 40 eighths? Think about all the things that we could do to these fractions. If we added straight across, we'd have a 25 on the top and a 3 on the bottom, so that can't be how we get it for trying to get 1 48th. If we multiplied across the top, Mm, 1 times 24 is just 24. 2 times 1 is 2. 24 over 2 would be 24 divided by 2 is 12. Well, shoot, each kid isn't getting 12 pieces of cantaloupe. That can't be right. Hmm. So how could we get a 48? Now, maybe you're looking at this and you're going, ooh, 2 times 24 is 48. But how do we get it on the bottom? And how do we get a one on the top? Ooh, one times one is one. And in fact, that's exactly what we do. We take that one half and we change the divided sign into a multiplication sign. But instead of just multiplying straight across, the other thing that we need to do is we need to flip one of the fractions around. So we now have one half 
times 1 24th. And now we have a multiplying fractions problem. We know how to do that. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 24 is 48. So basically what we do is we flip it and reverse it. We flip the fraction, just choose one of them to flip, and we reverse the sign. We do the inverse operation, the opposite. So if you want to remember that, just think for dividing, you flip it and reverse it. Let's try another one. So Naomi is thinking ahead to spring and she's thinking about making some raised flower gardens. And so she gets some um, square containers and she goes to the store and she buys some dirt. Thinking it'll be enough for what she wants to do for her project, she buys four bags of dirt. Now each one of her containers that she has is going to end up using three-fourths of a bag of dirt. Write all these facts down. So now we want to know how many containers Naomi can fill up completely with dirt and if she has any dirt left over. So let's start drawing out those containers. Here's one of her containers, and three-fourths of a bag of dirt goes in it. And she's got a fourth of that bag left over. She's got enough left. She's got three-fourths of another bag goes into her next container, and a fourth of a bag is left. She's got four bags of dirt so far, she's only used two, so we know we can do at least another container. Three-fourths of a bag with one-fourth left. Let's see, that's three bags. Another three-fourths of a bag and one-fourth left. Oh, that's, that's four bags. She's used up all of her bags. Oh, but wait! She's got all of these fourth of a bags left over and she's got one, two, three, four of them. She only needs one, two, three fourths to fill up another container so she can do that. She can take these three fourths and fill another container with them. And then she's got some leftovers. So, if we're trying to answer our original question, how many of her flower garden containers can she completely fill with dirt? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And how much dirt is left? A fourth of a bag is left. Write all that down in your notes. So let's take a look at why this whole flip it and reverse it really works. Why that algorithm, that method, that strategy works. We basically have the division problem of four bags of dirt divided into three-fourths sizes equals what? So that can be rewritten as four over one divided by three-fourths. Okay, let's try our flip it and reverse it strategy. We flip the fraction and we reverse the operation. To multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. Four times four is 16, and one times three is three. 16 thirds, but my answer was five gardens and a fourth of a bag left. So what on earth is going on here? Well, we have got an improper fraction. So let's change that improper fraction into a mixed number. This means 16 divided by three. So let's use partial quotients here. How many groups of three 
can we pull out of 16? Well, I know that 3 times 5 is 15, and that gets me awfully close. If I pull out those five groups of three, I only have one left. So five is my whole number, and one third is my fractional part left over. Now you might be thinking right now, wait, Mrs. Telestai, you said that there was a fourth of a bag left, but now you're saying that you've got a third left. Well, what is this a third of? Is it a third of a bag of dirt? Or is it a third of a container of dirt? If we look at our picture again, we see our one, two, three, four, five as our whole number, and then the one fourth left over. Now that's a fourth of a bag that's left over because we were talking about pouring out the dirt. So a fourth of a bag, if Naomi wanted to start another container, how much of a container would she fill? So let's draw a sixth container. If she's only got a fourth of a bag, and we know it's gonna take three fourths of a bag of dirt to get in this container and fill it completely. It's kind of like we've got one fourth of a bag, one fourth of a bag, one fourth of a bag to fill it up. So this fourth right here could fill that section. Now this container has been split into three parts. How much of the container is full? One part out of the one, two, three parts. One out of three. One third. <gasps> and our brains are blown. <laughs> so that's why the algorithm really works. But we've got to really understand the story problems and what they're asking first. Because our answer of five and a third would be that she could fill five whole containers and a third of another one, which means a fourth of a bag. Okay, let's try some. Get ready for your task. Using the flip it and reverse it method, try these fractions. Okay, here are your three problems, including one about Logan and his cake. Mmm. Think, flip it and reverse it. You can flip either one of the fractions and we should get the same answer. That'll be something that you discuss in your discussion groups tomorrow. Enjoy.